This video is for those of you using Digital Scrapbook Artist 2 along with either the Funtime 2010 die cutting software or the Puzzles Inspiration software. Well, if you're using Digital Scrapbook Artist 2, you can basically take any image, place it on your blank page, and then all you need to do is right click on it and click on Copy. Then you go into your Funtime software, go to the top of the screen, and I'm going to just click on the Paste button, and there is my image. So now I can easily vector this and create a cutting file or I could create a print and cut. Now for those of you that don't know how to vector on my YouTube channel I do have vectoring videos so don't worry. I'm just going to delete this. Now what you know obviously is that you can take any image and place it into Funtime 2010 but what a lot of you may not know is you can take any of your cutting files and convert them so that they'll open up in Digital Scrapbook Artist 2 where it will actually separate the file for you and you can create some really cool digital and cutting files mixed together so you've got a really great hybrid project. So let me show you a really fun thing to do. I'm going to take this image, I'm going to click on it to select it, and I'm going to add a puzzle to it. To do that I'm just going to go to the top of the screen in the Funtime 2010 software and I'm going to click on Image and then Puzzle. Now I want my puzzle to be 6x6 six six, so I'm going to drop this down and then select 6x6 six six and click on OK. I have six puzzle pieces going across and six puzzle pieces going down. While the image is still selected, I'm going to move my photograph out of the way because I do not need it. And what I want to do is transport this image into Digital Scrapbook Artist 2 so I can take this exact photograph and turn it into a digital puzzle that I can actually separate the pieces of. So in order to do that, I need to go back to my puzzle piece and I'm going to left click on it to select it. Now all I need to do is go over here to the color box and I'm going to highlight this area and I'm going to change the thickness of the lines to 0 0.04. Now another thing that's really important is you want to be in color mode when you're doing this because if you're in wireframe you're going to get pink and blue lines which are the positive and the negatives and it will not work. You must be in color mode and you'll know you're in color mode because obviously your lines get thicker. They will never get thicker in wireframe. Now while you've got your file selected go to the top of the screen click on file then you're going to go to export and then you're going to name your file Make sure that your file type is listed as PNG. If it's not, pull down this tab, find the PNG, click on it to select it, and then click on Save. Now it's important that you select the resolution X as 300 and the resolution Y as 300. And what's extremely important is right over here you can see that there is no dot beside 24 plus alpha. So you have to place the dot in there. Otherwise, it's just going to be a regular old PNG file which you cannot break apart into four different layers. So you definitely do want this portion selected. And over here between the X width and the Y width, you probably have 75 listed in each. Perfectly fine. You don't need to change it. I'm going to click on OK. You get a preview of what your file looks like. If you wanted to, you could drop this down. You could have a better look at it. I'm just going to go over here, click on OK give the file a few seconds to convert and then I'm going to go right back into Digital Scrapbook Artist 2. I've got my photograph already loaded. I'm going to move this over to the right hand side and next thing I want to do is go to Insert, go to Photo and From File. Now I save my puzzle PNG 24 Alpha to my desktop so what I want to do is just click on it once to select it and click on open. I want to go in the gray area because it's going to open up white so I'm just going to left click anywhere in the gray area. Now what you're not going to notice about this is this is actually imported upside down. It really doesn't matter with a puzzle piece but when you're working with image files that are vectors you do want to flip them and then all you basically do is go over here and you flip it. So I've just flipped this right side up. Now if I go over into my layers you can see I've got layer one and there's two items. This is item one, item number two. Let's just open this up so you can see this a bit better. So the, again, item one, item number two. What you want to do is while this image is selected, 
go right over here and click on Convert to Curves. And now look how many polycurves I have. I suddenly have 1,618. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on Break Apart. And now I have tons and tons of different layers. If I click on any of these, you can see that they're separate pieces. So I could actually move these puzzle pieces around right now. I'm just going to go back and place that back where it was. What you need to do with the puzzle is you want to get the middle section removed. The easiest way to do that is to go all the way down to the bottom of your layers, start at the bottom and have a look what you get, which is usually the outside, and then go one up. And that is your middle section. So while that is selected, you're just going to drag it down and you can delete this section here by selecting it and pressing delete on your keyboard. Now, in order to convert this into a puzzle that I can break apart with my photograph, I first need to turn this into a bitmap. So to do that, I'm going to leave it selected, go to the top of the screen, click on Tools, and Convert to Bitmap. Leave everything the way that it is with two check marks in each box. Click on OK and give it a second or two. Now it's been converted and you know this because you've got your photo lab and your cutout studio button appearing back at the top of the screen. So I'm going to now take my photograph, I'm going to place it onto my puzzle and I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit and I'm going to go over here and send my photograph to the front. Now I'm going to select both my photograph and my puzzle by drawing an imaginary box around both of them and this time I want to go to arrange at the top of the screen then go to crop and I want to crop to the bottom item, which is my puzzle. My photo is on top, but I'm cropping to the bottom item. Now that it's been cropped, I again need to convert it into a bitmap. So to do that, I'll leave it selected. I'll go to Tools, Convert to Bitmap, leave everything the way that it is with the two check marks over here. Click on OK, wait for it to convert, and once converted, all you need to do is go over here, click on Convert to Curves, and then Break Apart. And now you can see all your puzzle pieces with all of the pictures attached. You can now easily take any of these pieces and just move them out of your puzzle. And if you wanted to, you could even rotate them and kind of make it look like they're on a pile. So you get a different effect. Now that would be a very simple way to create a digital puzzle for your layouts. What you want to do is select all your pieces and group it up and this way you can move it around and if you want to take any pieces out of course you ungroup it, click off of your image and then remove the pieces that you want. I'm going to show you something else that I've done really quick. I went into my Funtime software, went through the blue book and all of these categories have cutting files inside of them, lots and lots of cutting files. So I went over to this category here which is S pick 5, double clicked on it, went to this arrow, pointed it down, and then found this file here which is a nice cutting file. It's uh, number 14B. Left click on it once, closed the blue book, and now I have it on my blank page. So I converted it the same way that I converted the puzzle. Next I went back into Digital Scrapbook Artist 2 and I opened up the file, did the same thing I did with the puzzle pieces, only this time I created something a little bit different. I took my photograph and I placed this image on top of my photograph and then I cropped it to the top. So that way I got this nice outline and then basically I just used this file over here and filled it up with some nice metallic colors and then I used this file and placed that in the back. So I got this really nice interesting effect. So you can do all kinds of wonderful things with your cutting files. Now the only thing I should mention is if you want to start coloring these different colors, you first have to color fill the white file and that's done by clicking on it to select it. You're going to right click go to Filter Effects and then you might want to open up this area so you can have a preview of what it looks like. Go over to Color Fill and over here you can change it to any color you want. You can also click on More Colors. Um, I'm going to click on Black and I'm going to click on OK. Once you've done that you must convert it to a bitmap. Again that's done by going to Tools and then convert to bitmap. Once it's been converted, then you can change this to any color you want in your color selections. If you don't convert it to a bitmap, you can still change it using any of your effects, but you won't be able to change it using this. That concludes this video. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to email me. My email address is lovemyzombie at yahoo.ca.